Welcome to Being Mindful. I thought perhaps it would be helpful to share a little bit today about my journey to mindfulness, how I discovered it, what I did with it, what I didn't do with it, and how I define it, how it might be useful to you as you navigate your regular old day and difficult times as well. Let's get started. I was introduced to mindfulness about six years ago when I decided to sign up for a one credit class during my time as a graduate student when I was studying counseling. It was a class on mindfulness for caregivers and I thought it would be a nice break. How it was structured is that it was an eight week half semester course where we worked through a book called Mindfulness Based Stress Reduction. And I'll provide a link to that below in the description. And we worked together through this workbook as a group. So we you know, read at night and filled in our blanks and then processed it and practiced it as a group. And I found that it made such a difference for me. I was fascinated by the idea of mindfulness and I wanted to learn everything I could about it. But I also found it to be beneficial to me to practice. I ended up transitioning from a one credit class to a three credit class where I took an extra eight weeks of further examination and exploration of mindfulness. And I decided to write a research paper as well and present it to the class. I sort of fell in love with it. Um, but at the time, I would say it was maybe a more academic cognitive experience for me. I liked the idea of it and I wasn't always so good at practicing it. A year later, I was invited to co-teach the same class to other students and that allowed me to explore it even more deeply to articulate for myself what I think mindfulness is and to share it with others. I graduated then and uh, ended up becoming a counselor, a licensed mental health counselor, and found that using it with clients was really transformative. About a year ago, I decided it might be helpful to host virtual mindfulness sessions with my work colleagues. Uh, I telecommute to a research company that's based in North Carolina, and we have a lot of telecommuters. And I thought it might be helpful for us to have a place to practice mindfulness together. And so I've been leading twice weekly sessions for, the, for over a year now. And that's what prompted me to offer this channel that I had counseling clients who really wanted to be able to access recordings of my mindfulness sessions. And I wanted to be able to make the sessions available to those who weren't able to attend the live virtual group sessions. So that's my story. That's my history of mindfulness. I, um, I'm not certified to teach it or train people in it, but I have found it to be useful and the sessions that I lead seem to be helpful to others. And that's something I wanna share with you. So let's talk a little bit about what mindfulness is. For me, I guess the definition I would use most frequently is intentional focus on the present moment without judgment. So intentional focus on the present moment without judgment. And let's unpack each of these three aspects. I think part of what's important about mindfulness for me is intentionality and that these practices allow me to flex the muscle in my brain or, or build a neural pathway that helps me to be able to focus on something when I choose to focus on it so that I'm not being whipped around by my emotions or my thoughts or uh, something in the environment that occurs to me that I 
become practiced at being able to be intentional and doing things on purpose. And that is a skill that is helpful, I think, through our daily lives, but it's especially helpful when there's something stressful or, um, or even threatening happening that it allows us to decide to be aware of what's happening and decide what to do about it in the moment. So that intentional focus is something that we have to practice and become used to, and it gives us a sense of control. The second aspect, present moment, is also a really important aspect because we spend a lot of our lives thinking. And that thinking, for the most part, is not about what's happening right now. It's often about something that has already happened, that we are rehashing, that we are remembering, that we are analyzing. And so we're spending a fair amount of our time in the past rather than in the present with what's happening now. Alternately, we're sometimes focused on the future. We're planning, we're worrying, we're anticipating, we're expecting. It's not a bad thing necessarily to be in the past or the future, but it does mean that when we are in one of those two places, that we're not paying tons of attention to what's happening right now in the present moment. This might mean that we're actually missing out on something wonderful that's happening. It might mean that we're not fully experiencing something difficult that's happening. We're not processing an emotion that we're having. We're pushing it off and finding it easier to focus elsewhere. We're also not necessarily paying attention to someone we're talking with. We even have those moments, right, where someone's talking and we're waiting for them to finish so that we can say what we want to say. And we've only half listened to what they had to share. And people can sense that when we're not fully present with them, right? When we're making eye contact, but there's this part of our brain that is focused elsewhere. And so this ability to practice being in the present moment, to really notice what's happening is a skill that can be helpful in our relationships. It can be helpful in not getting lost in thought, in fear, in emotion but fully experiencing what's happening. And then the third aspect is non-judgment, without judgment. So our brains are very good at analyzing and categorizing and deciding what is safe or not safe, what we like or don't like. We tend to do that in dichotomies, not always, but a lot of times. And so we might be having an experience and we spend so much time deciding whether it's a good experience or a bad experience that we're not really fully experiencing it, right? And so, you know, we might notice that we're having a, a pain, a physical pain in our body, and we judge that as a bad thing because we don't like it. Or maybe we're having a difficult emotion and our minds don't want us to experience that because it's a bad thing, it's a negative emotion. And so if we can begin to develop this skill of just observing something the way it is and the way it isn't, and explore it with curiosity, with some compassion perhaps, and not try to decide in that instant whether it's good or bad, but to really see what's there for what it is. And so again, what we're doing is intentionally focusing on what's happening in the present moment, and we're trying not to judge it as it's happening. The judgment can certainly happen later. And by doing this, by practicing this through a formal meditation on a regular basis, we start to get better at just doing it in our regular daily run-of-the-mill life. We begin to fully engage in what's happening 
with our life. We live our lives in the moment rather than being on autopilot or lost in thought or emotion. This is a skill that helps us to have richer, more meaningful lives as we live them. It helps us to be more connected to others because we're truly listening to what they have to say and watching their faces or uh, noticing those small details that we might otherwise miss. You know, when we're driving, we're actually noticing what we see and perhaps enjoying it rather than uh, at the end of our drive realizing that we were on autopilot and didn't even remember getting where we got. Not only does it help us fully experience and engage in our daily run-of-the-mill life, by building these neural pathways and practices, it also helps us to weather the storms of life, right? It helps us stay anchored when things that might normally sort of carry us away become out of control. It helps us to stay grounded, to look at what's happening, and to not flip out or lose it quite as often as we used to. It's not that the, the storm stops. It's not that we are just calm and perfect in the midst of stress and difficulty, but it helps us to stay grounded and to make the best decisions possible, to take actions that are in line with our values so that we don't lose ourselves in the midst of difficulty. So I hope that you will join me on this journey as we explore mindfulness together. I hope that you'll consider subscribing to the channel so that you can be part of this community where we practice and learn together. If you click the notification bell, you can get notifications that something new is available for you to see. I do post videos on Mondays and Fridays, sometimes a day later if it takes a little while to get them edited. But I am trying to share this content with you twice a week. And so I hope that you will subscribe and join and let me know how this is helping you. Or if it's not, um, what is it that you're looking for? What can I share to help you learn these skills and practice them on a regular basis. Thanks for joining me today and have a wonderful day.